Speed with Amy. Pam is not here today. She's coming back from a trip to see her grandkids and I am flying solo solo like nobody's even behind the camera. So if you have questions, I'm sorry I cannot answer them right now. I will get to them as soon as I can though. Welcome. I hope you are having a great day and have an amazing weekend. My name is Amy. I am a dynamic wellness coach for health conscious peeps and I love bringing joy to your kitchen. I am here today to cook with you meatloaf, Thai burgers, actually meatloaf with sweet potato fries that we're going to do in the air fryer, a Thai burger and with a slaw that's super yummy. And then if you saw my getting saucy last week, you'll have the dressing already for that. And then we're going to make in a simple asparagus soup that goes really good with any kind of grilled meat that you might have marinating in one of our special vinaigrettes. So let's get started. I'm super excited today and it is nasty cloudy out, but that's okay. We're still gonna bring joy to the kitchen because we are cooking with love. We are infusing that into the meals that we provide for our families or ourselves. We should love ourselves too, right? And so here we go. Look, I had my handy dandy glove out. So I've spent about 30 minutes prepping. And I know that in these classes, sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, we got done in an hour. And you all realize I did a little prep before and I also have to clean up. So when the recipes say, oh, I don't know if, uh, or they have the, the time, the prep time, I, I'm always confused by that. So I want to make sure that it's clear that yes, uh, I am showing you the video of it being pretty short, but of course you have to clean up if that takes extra time. So I hope that you are enjoying this. And again, my apologies for not being able to answer any questions, but I will get to them as soon as I get done. But this is all super fun stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is get our meats, ground meats, marinating, if you will. Because so we're going to add some spices and things to them, and we want them to come to room temperature and have those um, things that we've added to them kind of melt into them before we start cooking. So the first thing I'm going to do for the meatloaf is uh, a sweet onion, and I'm just going to puree it so there's no chunks. Get out a handy dandy ninja. Love making noise in the kitchen. There we go. All right. Just a minute. I just got my knife sharpened this weekend. Holy smokes. So I'm super cautious <laughs> when I'm using them right now. There we go. Let's grab something. The struggle I had with the tripod that I'm using, it was uh, a little crooked and I had to tape it because it kept falling down. So if it falls down suddenly, uh, I don't know what's going on. We'll have to see. Again, I'm flying solo and Pam is usually the one that's so good at keeping up on all this stuff. So we've got that. We've got your favorite barbecue sauce. Ours is the Kinder Mild Organic Yumminess. Put some of that in there. You can also use powdered onion if you don't have uh, fresh. I just prefer to do fresh when you have it. So this is something, if you have frozen meat in the refrigerator and a lot of these spices we keep in our refrigerator, you can make this up pretty quickly. So I'm looking for a little bit of avocado oil. And today I'm actually gonna make these in kind of cup size so that they're individual portions. Do some salt and pepper. This is super simple meatloaf. I like the barbecue sauce flavoring instead of ketchup. Just adds a twist. But the traditional ketchup is also super yummy. So there we go. And jump over here. Oh. I forgot to grab my pencil bucket. Oops. So just get this chopped up. turkeys and their turkeys they just got I think like 70 or 80 turkeys 
this week they'll be coming in. So they'll be raising those for Thanksgiving. If you want to get an order in for that, uh, go to newlandranch.com and email Eric and you can tell him I sent you. So, but you can always go Saturday. Most days they are, uh, most weeks I should say, they're open on Saturday from nine to three. And they have beef and pork and chicken, whole fryers, not pieces. And yeah, turkey's coming up. So yummy stuff. We actually went there. It is my, my mom and my stepdad. And we went there for the holiday weekend. It was super fun to camp out in the back. And uh, you know, no need to make a camping spot or reservation when you have land you can go to. It was awesome. I also know that they did just get in this week. They'll be getting two or three steers that they just had butchered um, and are ready to go. So if you're really interested in some good meat, then newlandranch.com. And I will also put a link to that underneath the video when I get there. Get done with this. So here we go. there to be bacon and you can either have raw bacon and you can put it inside or I always have bacon bits like this so I'm going to stick with those and sprinkle them on top kind of yummy with a little bit of a barbecue sauce that's how I'm going to do mine if you want to make it into lobes and it really makes good sandwiches so oh, it smells good I like to smell it if it does not smelling good yet then you need to keep adding some stuff salt and pepper and barbecue sauce. Okay, we're gonna let that sit there and soak a little bit. Like that. Easy peasy. So next, I'm gonna use this again. It has onion in it, but I know that I can put in onion again and it won't change um, or taint the next dish. So. I like to stack things up if I can without having to wash it. You could rinse it out simply, but then there's water in it and you have to dry it. But if you're doing onion and onion or garlic and stuff like that, then you can do that. I couldn't have done the Thai burgers first because they're garlic and onion and these different sauces. So you wouldn't want to, you couldn't switch that with it going this way. So that's one way to be efficient in the kitchen. And I know I, I said just a quarter of an onion and look at this adorable little tiny baby red onion, which normally they're huge. So. I was super excited to find that today. And we'll get those in there. I've got my ginger and my garlic. I'm going to do a quick chop of that, put it to the bigger stuff. There you go. And then we're going to get our cilantro. Now, I'm doing two pounds of burger today. So we can make quite a few of these because they're super yummy. So let's do all the cilantro because hmm, maybe we'll save a little bit for the salad. That's a good idea. All right. I love keeping bowls handy. That makes working in the kitchen easy. I'm just going to stuff that in there. Remember, I always say joy in the kitchen is colors. I always find you with fun bowls. Today I'm going pink. I've been wearing red, white, and blue all weekend, and so I was in the mood to wear something different. Time for pink. Okay. Let's kind of get in there a bit. It's all chopped, chopped. Then we're going to add some of our toasted sesame seed oil. It smells amazing. You can get sesame seed oil just without it being toasted, but trust me, the toasted stuff is divine, if you like that. If you don't, I would go with half, just because it does add to the flavor. Like, in some of the Asian dishes, there's spices that you're like, ooh, I don't like that alone, but it really does enhance the overall flavor, so you wanna stick at least a little bit of it in there. Those are all really well. Now these are going to be really soft, so 
So you'll notice in the instructions, you won't be able to use this on like the barbecue. You have to have a flat grill. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a bit. This does not need salt and pepper to start because it's got the soy sauce, which is salty. And uh, that works really well for it. So you don't want to over salt. Okay. I'm going to put that in here. Super runny. You can also use ground uh, chicken. In fact, when I originally created, started with this, I was using whole chicken breasts and chopping them in the food processor, which is kind of fun because then you have kind of bigger bits, but this is uh, easier. And since we're doing meal prep easy, that's what I thought we'd go with. for this one. Again, super ready. So there we go. I'm going to use this one. This one's so easy to stir because it's super soft. Again, we're going to mix this in and then let it sit. If you can let it sit overnight, even better. Little frozen chunks in there still. But we'll cook a couple of these up for you to see. And ironically, I use a, a tortilla pan because I like the really flat surface of it. And it's easier to flip rather than trying to get a spatula down into a skillet. If you use this thing here, it's uh, super easy to do the flipping. So, all right. Gummy. Super gummy. All right, this is going to sit and we're on to the next. Being just a little bit prepared makes a huge difference and makes you, allows you to move through things really quickly. So, clean up my board a little bit. Next, we're going to do asparagus soup. Wow. And I've already got most of the asparagus in here, okay? I also chopped the onion, kind of big, one did you see? And then one celery, a little bit of garlic. Pull this out. We like garlic. Just gonna chop off the little ends. This pre-packaged stuff is great when you're needing it and you don't have time to open and this keeps in the refrigerator very well. You can also buy um, the garlic and open it and chop it small and then keep it in the refrigerator for a couple of months. That's what I like to do. Then it's super fresh. I'm gonna stick that in there. I just wanted to show you again how you do the asparagus. You're trying to find the most tender point and then these are easy, you just break in half. If you wanna do a presentation with these, save a few of these little guys on top to put in there. Uh, in the eye. And you can make it all pretty. So, that's easy. Alright. Um, got it. I'm going to hold off on the salt and pepper for just a bit. Let's shake that. And I think this should fit exactly. You just want the broth right over the top of the veggies.
Let's see, that's for the salad. Let's do a little bit of salad stuff. Let's do a little bit of salad stuff. I'm talking with my back to the camera, sorry. Got this and that. That away. Alrighty, I already started doing some of the salad. And, silly me, I forgot carrots today. So I don't have any carrots to put in here. Uh, but you'll see I'm using a different blade. I'm making the cabbage little squares. And I'm doing that by using this thick blade and with my glove, because this thing is nasty. You do not want to get your fingers in that. First time I used it, I put my whole palm into it. Not pretty, although I didn't have to do dishes for a week, so that was kind of fun. There's the silver lining of that. Remember, when you're cutting up your cabbage to be able to scour it like this, you want to make sure that you leave a little tiny bit of core in each piece. So you're cutting it in half from the core and half again, so that you can leave a piece and it holds it together better. And uh, go from there. So, I don't want to put the uh, cucumber in this until I know I'm going to eat it in the next couple of days. And I don't know when I'm getting back to the store, or Pam will get to the store in the next day or so. So I'm going to Leave that like that. I've already started chopping the cucumber a bit. And you'll see again, these chunks are big. I'm using the big thing just to change it up. You might find that you like the thinner slice like we do for the summer slaw, which has the carrot and apple. Um, this is just a slight variation. It's got the cucumber instead of the apple and we're gonna use the almond butter dressing on there. So um, it's a little bit more uh, Asian inspired, but this is easy. And the cucumber cut up like this will last three or four days in the fridge, maybe longer. Just kind of depends on the season and when they were picked. And I like to just keep it in your head they need to be eaten in the next four or five days. So there. And then I'm going to nestle that right in there. And we're going to have our salad. Ta da! So. The next thing I was cutting with our handy dandy uh, cutter, same one, was potatoes for the sweet potato fries. I'm dumping them out. So the thing that when you're picking out a potato to make fries, because I'm using the mandolin to cut it, so I wanted to try this in the air fryer and see how well they'll do. I'm going to just put some oil and some Italian seasoning in there and some garlic, and we're going to try that out. But because um, the thicker ones will take a lot longer. I think that these will cook super fast and should be yummy crunchy. But when you're picking out a potato, this is actually a wrong potato, this is what made me think of it. It is way too thick. You'll notice when I'm doing this, when you're cutting potatoes on this thing, you have to commit to pushing it all the way to here because that's the only way to get it going. And you can't, if you stop halfway, it goes, it's hard to pull out and then push back in again. So you want to ideally get a potato that's about half an inch smaller around than this. The other ones I did really easy, then I was like, oh, that's not a very good one. So more like this size would be ideal because it's something you can hang on to and then you push it through. But see, it's a good workout. And you don't want your sleeve in there. So it's a cool size. If you can do it, definitely takes some good strength. But see how cool those are? This is gonna be really good. So we're gonna put them in here. When they're like this, it should be actually pretty easy to put them in the oven too, because they're nice and little. Uh, in my house when I was younger, we would do this and then actually deep fry them in avocado oil, which is super good and yummy. And then you get to decide how comfortable you are with how low, and I think that's enough. <laughs> I started to sweat, and I'm like, okay. Even with a glove on, I don't want to hit that thing. It's too scary. So, the good news is that if you haven't been cut by it, then you won't be as <laughs> shot as, what? Not camera shy, uh, gun shy as I am about it? Should be working okay. All right, so there's our potatoes. Let's oil them up a bit. There's quite a bit there, so a good 
quarter cup seems appropriate. All right, and some garlic. Another th good thing if you wanted to go more uh, Spanish, you could use some paprika on there. So paprika would be yummy. Here we are with shaking baby. I need a bigger bag. Huh. Yep, let's do two bags. I didn't manage that one so great. Filling all over the door. I can come show you. See? Nice little layer. That should be working. Let's see how that does. This is practice with Amy in the kitchen. Discover, right? Okay. Be brave in the kitchen. That's what we need. 400 degrees. Air fry. Eight minutes. That's my special number. Okay. Let's do some meatloaf. I did already turn on the oven. So... Away. I'm done with my knife. There we go. Okay, this smells great. like half cup ball. Let's see. That's a bit big. 
Let's see how this starts. Mm. A little bit less, depending on the size of your cups. Or you can just put this into a bread pan. But this helps it. Uh, it's kind of fun also for lunches, snacks, during the summer, easier. You can take this on a picnic, make these, then uh, have some barbecue sauce. If you wanted to, you could even just throw one into a bun. Meatloaf patties. All right, there goes my sleeve. Dun, dun, dun. These don't rise, but they do get juicy. So you need to make sure you leave some room for juices, which I'm feeling like some of these don't have, so we're gonna take some out. Also, because we're still gonna put some more barbecue and some bacon on there. This will kind of make them rough on the top too for good bacon. bacon bits. They're real bacon and it's just bits and it's in uh, the salad section and then you just put them in the freezer and they last forever. If you can have bacon last forever, right? But it keeps them really well. And then when you're needing recipes, like if you want to scramble even, I'll add that to a scramble really easy. When I don't have this kind of stuff set aside. Bacon! You can also, with these, uh, meatloaf is combined two different kinds of meat, which is just great for getting other things into your system. I'm not always doing beef, but lamb and pork, ground pork, do really well in these. So, all right. That's coming. We have some left. And I have another big dog. start to realize that I get very serious <laughs> when I'm doing this. Concentrating. Oh no, we're running out of sauce. Go! Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Gotta be. I know I have another jar, but let's get every last drip out of there. You know what I do with my jars is I save them in the refrigerator until I make the barbecue cold chicken or pork or beef. And then I put some of the juices after I made them into the jar and shake it up so that, you know, you're getting every last drop of this yummy stuff. All right, we're going to go pantry diving here. Into the pantry. Be right back. You can also get it at 
grocery outlet and it's super yummy so it's become favorite and even when i introduce it to new people they're like wow that's super good so get it open malfunction on stage what the heck a nice milk french fries I will have to say, it's very strange being here by myself. I don't know that I like it, but I'm glad you're out there somewhere watching me. I wish I could talk to you. Ah. Give it a good shake. And make sure we get sauce on our last one. Don't leave it out. Doop. All these other ones look great. There we go. Now, the instructions usually are for 35 minutes to 45, and sometimes it takes longer depending on how thick they go in, but these ones are little. So we're gonna do 15 minutes and see where we stand. Ta-da! Alrighty. And... There we go, and my fries just finished. Yum! Okay. Oh, That's good. Hmm. What am I going to do? Probably just trim a bit. But they're on the verge. Of, they're on the verge of getting crunchy. So.
you have a spray oil, it's kind of nice because then you can keep spraying as you're cooking more. We're going to cook these ones and then I'll save the rest for later. That's still simmering. they like brown pretty quickly and sizzle and seal if not they just all over the place so you get this put away the fries are going good if you haven't bought an air fryer yet I suggest the Cuisinart but get the digital one it's about $20 more but you just have a better control of timing that way unless you have an outside timer that you like to use. This just has a turn dial, which if you want to get to 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50, I think it goes up to minutes, it's pretty uh, on target, and then from there you're kind of guessing. Not a big deal, but it can be frustrating if you're trying to follow a recipe that has timing and you're unsure about it. So again, we want to bring joy to the kitchen and have tools and things that help us make the job easier or more enjoyable, that you're not fighting, you're not fighting with dull knives, you're not fighting with, with not having the right utensils, you're not fighting with think, like having the right pans. It's very important to have your favorite kind of assortment of pans and pretty bowls, <laughs> that's important to me, um, and just have them well stocked, but going through it on a regular basis is, uh, is pretty ideal to keeping the ball ro rolling on this. So, those smell good. Pam and I always have the greatest time figuring out what we're gonna eat for dinner the first night, and we actually wanna take a bite of everything. Because it's super yummy. So, we'll see, got my hand put in here. Okay. Hot, which one's hotter? This one's not hot, come on, get hot. There we go. We'll put it exactly between the high and the low. I'm nine. Gotta sizzle. And there we go. So I would love to know if you're watching now or watching in a replay, what kind of recipes, even like just food genres you would like to see. I do have several things planned for July that I think you will enjoy, and I hope that you enjoyed the salads and were able to take something to a, a picnic or have your own picnic. Um, I know I took two of the salads that I had made, which is good. There's our french fries. Oh, those look amazing. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the trick. Add salt. <laughs> um, the largest Julian shred on the mandolin is great. And they are crunchy and they're done. And if I'm going to do them again, probably for just a few more minutes, so that uh, when I want to reheat them, I would leave them like this now. Then when you want to reheat them, you won't overcook them. But I did eight minutes on each side. Or I did eight minutes and then I stirred them a little bit and then I did eight minutes. And because they're so thin and little, I was able to stack them, not necessarily have to stack them in a row like that. Just kind of clump them in there. So that's good. All right, this is getting hot. So you want to pull out this lovely thing and plop it on there. And it's still not sizzling hot. What did I do? Oh, there it goes. Now I hear it. And you want to kind of smash it out in a circle. And then do the next one. Oh, this one's sticking. Come on. Literally, this stuff is super sticky. Super yummy. Totally worth it. Just in case you get frustrated, I promise it'll be worth it. Because they are yummy. And you can put them on a bun with the coleslaw is kind of like the topper. And then the almond butter dressing, oh my goodness. It's all amazing. And simple. Okay, I'm 
then turn it down just a little bit, and I turn that down too much. So I'm right. Okay, I'm only going to be able to fit four on here. That's okay.
So they still taste good. And then you can just mix it into your meat. Easy peasy. But we're going to save the rest for cooking another time. And since they do cook up really fast, there's something you can just keep that marinating. And the longer they sit without being cooked, they get so yummy. <sighs> so it's kind of fun to have burger, but with a different flavor profile. Made a mess. Alrighty. So let's blend this baby. It's going to be loud. But watch this color. It's beautiful. Take out our 
meatballs, oops. Not meatballs, meatloaf. Meatloaf cuts. Let's see how we're going here. Oh yeah, those are good. So maybe more like 17 minutes. try and make sure it's okay. That's a cool thing. So I'm going to turn that off. Cancel. Mmm. There you have it guys. Meals for the week, lunches, snacks, dinners, with joy, fabulous, fast, fun. Keep cooking with me. I'm here every Monday whether it's live or I'm doing a replay for you. You get three recipes a week with the shopping list. Sign up for that. They come every Wednesday at noon. If you don't get work yours, message us and we'll make sure you get on the list. And there you have it. And then also stay tuned. My book's coming. It's really coming. I didn't know that it would take this long, but it's coming. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and supporting us. We love you and we will see you soon. Take care.